Here is where I get to set my spirit free Here is where I find my naturality Where are we going? Hello, I'm Kiara Arias. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and welcome to another episode of GRIT 2020. Today, we are joined by Tamara Smith, undergraduate coordinator for the Center for Civic Justice. So, do you mind telling us a little bit more about your role at the CCJ and what made you interested in this position? So my role as an undergraduate coordinator um, is basically, um, I see it as student support um, with, within the center for our interns as well as um, all students on campus. So we work on different projects throughout the semester, um, focusing on community engagement, civic engagement, voting engagement, um, basically anything to get people involved in their communities. And that's one of the main reasons I joined. Um, I really always felt like I wanted to do something for other people. Um, I didn't necessarily know how I wanted to do so, but um, coming into the center, seeing the different ways that they offered to be civically engaged, I feel like that was like the number one thing that made me want to join and want to be a part of it. That's great. It's really cool that you're doing something to support other students on campus yeah. while you're a student yourself. So since starting this position, what's the biggest myth that you've uncovered about um, position? I think it's a myth that people still kind of have. My vote doesn't matter. Mm. Um, and I wouldn't say that I believed the myth before I came, but um, I could, and I still do understand why people think that. So when you think of the electoral college and people are like, well, we don't vote, it's just the electors, and they basically just vote for whatever they want to vote for. And that kind of, um, I guess, misinformation that's been passed down for generations. Um, I don't expect, um, you know, our generation to magically, you know, <laughs> believe that um, our vote matters more than the last generation, but it does. Um, and I feel like this election specifically, um, people are starting to take a chance. Um, I'm not sure if people completely believe that their vote matters, but it, it makes me happy that people are taking the chance with it, you mm -hmm. know? Um, I always tell them, well, if it doesn't matter, just vote anyway. See yeah, it happens. doesn't hurt. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't hurt. Um, so, as a student at Stony Brook, how would you describe the current political climate on campus? Um, well, living on campus, um, it's definitely not as many people, so I don't um, interact with as, as many people, but um, being in the center and having people come in to ask questions, you can definitely see a sense of urgency um, and slight anxiety with this <laughs> election. Um, on you know on on either sides wherever you plan on voting each um, I guess each candidate means a lot to whoever is voting to for them for various reasons so mm -hmm. um, we're getting a whole lot of questions we're definitely getting um, people coming back more than once we're getting people who are trying to make sure they have everything in place mm -hmm. and that's something that I've never seen before so I'm really excited about it that's nice it's it's really interesting how I guess not polarizing, but passionate people are about whichever uh, candidate they're interested in. So it's interesting that you brought that up and that you're experiencing that. Yeah. Um, so do you think most people on campus are more or less engaged in having political conversations? Um, more definitely now. So um, I always say that you don't think that you need to do anything until something happens. So that was very vague of me, but let me kind of explain <laughs> in, the, um, in the sense of the election. Um, we all knew that, you know, an election was coming up and we all knew that, um, you know, we can either reelect the current president or elect a new one. But I feel like especially during this summer with multiple things such as the pandemic, as well as um, social justice protests around the country and just seeing how each candidate responds to the grievances of this country, I feel like, that was something that people were like, wait, I think I should have a say in this. Like, it affects me too. And I feel like people are starting to now understand that, um, you know, we know it's not a fair system for everyone, but choosing to like willfully not participate doesn't seem like the best option for a lot of people now. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that people are starting to come to that realization. Uh, what do you think it is that brought people to this realization? Do you think it's social media that's sort of it's definitely social media in my opinion um we have the the performative activists on social media we but <laughs> that also brings out a lot of 
I don't want to just say real activists because everyone's an activist in their own way, but you see, it, it really brought out the people who were already politically and civically engaged prior to, and it just started, um, I think, an influx of information and education. Um, who knew hashtags could inform people as much as they do? <laughs> um, like me, myself, I know if I click on a certain hashtag, I will be loaded with a, a bunch of information, and that's how I find my information a lot of the time. So especially with this generation being so heavily influenced by social media, I felt like it was only inevitable for politics to, you know, influence social media and therefore influence, you know, first-time voters and um, anyone who's just looking into how the world is going right now. Yeah, uh, especially over, you know, quarantine, when you didn't have much to do, all you had was your phone. So you yeah. saw all those little like informational <laughs> like graphics on yeah. Instagram. It's like, wow, like I didn't know this was happening for this many years. Yeah. And I guess that's also like what made people even more like or made them mobilize more yeah. because now they're more educated about what they can do and what like needs to change. Yeah. I guess. Uh but anyway. <laughs> A lot of young people don't vote in the same numbers as older voters. So what do you think that, like, why do you think that is? Why do college students not vote as yeah. often? <laughs> um, I, I tell people this as blunt as possible. Mm -hmm. um, it's a known fact that young people don't vote. Mm -hmm. Those who are eligible, they don't really go out. So I think of it, if I'm a politician and I'm trying to win, Am I going to focus on policies and initiatives that help people who don't even vote? You know, so I try to tell people that, and I'm like, you have to make them listen to you. Mm -hmm. um, right now, they're like, I don't really need to worry about a young person's vote because they're not going to make it to the polls. Mm -hmm. um, with older people, they, you know, they'll be up at 6 a.m. They will. It's it's definitely habitual. So when you're older, you know, you voted for many years. So for first time voters, it's definitely something to get into the habit of. But that's why I try to tell people to get into the habit of it early, because we need to let these politicians know, like, we're the future of this country. Start treating us like that. Mm -hmm. Start making policies that benefit us now. Um, stop with the whole, you know, benefit the older generations now and we'll figure it out later. Yeah. That's no longer acceptable and we need to put our foot down. So us going to the polls, not only presidential elections, but local elections, show that local district judge that you shouldn't be giving someone 15 years, you know, yeah. for yeah. A, like, you know, a minimal drug charge or things mm -hmm. like that. We need to start letting them know that we're more than talk. Because yeah. I feel like a lot of politicians think that our generation is just talk and social media. Show them that we also go to mm -hmm. the polls. I think a lot of it is also they don't know how their vote can affect different things. Like you just brought up the district attorney. Yeah. Like it's more than just a presidential election yeah. that you can like uh, enact change. Um, but anyways, to wrap this all up, I'm going to ask you a really big question. Okay. So we are living through a pretty interesting time. There are social justice movements, presidential election, um, all while the pandemic <laughs> just continues. Um, how would you describe this sort of time period to, let's say, your grandchildren in 50 years? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I would say um, eye-opening. I feel like that's the best word. Um, eye-opening in positive and negative ways. Um, positive ways as in um, I've seen a lot of my peers become civically engaged and see a lot of my peers become engaged. That's something that I've always wanted to see. I was tired of being the only one who cared <laughs> about voting. Um, and eye-opening in negative ways because um, a lot of us wanted to believe that we were like post-racial um, injustice. Um, a lot of us, we were taught to believe that you know the really bad stuff doesn't happen anymore. Um, but I feel like this point in time showed that like bad stuff does happen. It's just swept under the rug and it's institutionalized. So it's also giving us an opportunity to um, be aware and then therefore make action. And I think we're doing it on uh, multiple levels. We're not just you know running to the polls, but we're making changes in our institutions too. We're coming together at our universities or colleges across the country and we're telling them, this is what's going on in the world and we need to see this from you because we expect better from our institutions as a whole. So I definitely feel like I'll tell them that it was a point in time where I knew um, I either say something or become complacent and I'm I did not decide to be complacent I decided mm -hmm. to say something I decided to do something and 
um, this is a fight that we're gonna have to fight for a really long time. So I hope my, you know, my future <laughs> grandchildren are like, I'm gonna be just like you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, I think that was a really good answer. <laughs> um, but that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for your work at Thanks. the CCJ and for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Don't turn around, don't turn around. Just keep moving forward. Keep holding on.